through the course of the talk, I'll, I'll use the phrase conventional hip replacement. I, I use the word cautiously because it makes it sound boring and old and tired and the same old. Um, and that's not really true. The first hip replacements were done by really the hero of orthopedics. This guy was just a, a, a innovator and a genius, and he worked in England, John Charnley. Is, uh, was knighted eventually for his work, and most of us feel he deserves a Nobel Prize. He really has been so, so instrumental in not just developing hip replacements, but other aspects of orthopedics. And there are a few, there are a few successful operations or successful treatment plans that can be traced back to one guy. He did more things that, that led the way, and, and since then it has just mostly been refinement and um, smaller developments. It was a revolution when he began with hip replacements in 68, and since then it has been smaller incremental steps. The biggest issues that he solved initially were fixing the implants into place and de designing and developing the materials of the bearing surfaces, the parts that rubbed against each other. But just imagine, in 1965, if you had hip arthritis, you got a walker or a wheelchair, 1968. And it wasn't really until the mid-70s before it was widely available here in America. But just think about that, 1973, my goodness, that was Nixon, that was the Vietnam War. People were still, in America, given wheelchairs instead of a, a, a good, effective treatment. I just saw in the past year two patients who'd had really first-generation hip replacements. They had been done in Macon. I forget the surgeon's name, but he was a pioneer in the mid-70s. And these two patients both still had their original hip replacements in. It had been, well, 30 years. <clears throat> and, and that was a real, a real success for those patients. The traditional statements, and you can imagine, in 1973, 1978, 1982, this was a new operation, and we didn't know much about it, and it was a different era. People who were 50 or 60 weren't really playing sports very much. The hip replacements weren't that great. Maybe they would last 10 or 15 years. So the general attitude was, listen, be happy with what you have. Enjoy not having any pain, and don't get greedy. Don't go playing no tennis or handball or anything. And, and that, that, unfortunately, never really had an important scientific basis to it. There was never good support for, for restricting people from activities, but it was kind of grandfathered in and has been a dogma for a long time. <clears throat> 